Hey y'all, Sarah here with the Instagram account Cooking with the First Ladies. And today for the National First Ladies Library, we will be celebrating National Pasta Month with a classic mac and cheese from Bess Truman, a French inspired pasta dish from Mrs. Kennedy, and Thomas Jefferson's recipe for homemade macaroni, as well as his version of macaroni and cheese. Um, so let's get started with Bess Truman. Now, Bess Truman was a really shy first lady and unlike Eleanor Roosevelt before her, made it very clear that she didn't want to be in the spotlight. Um, even so, Bess was described as being the perfect lady uh, who was very genuine and thoughtful. Uh, Harry and Bess Truman were both from Missouri, uh, so their food preferences and her recipes really reflect their Midwestern roots. Um, even as a first lady, she occasionally prepared meals at the White House for family and friends. Uh, her most popular recipe and the one that was printed most frequently was her macaroni and cheese. Uh, she actually made this exact recipe for President Truman, and the recipe is actually from her handwritten copy. Uh, so, to make her recipe, you are going to take eight ounces of macaroni that's been cooked according to the package directions. Um, you will also need two cups of grated cheddar cheese. Um, now, after you drain the macaroni, you're going to put a layer of macaroni in the baking dish. Then, uh, you're going to continue to layer until you use all of your ingredients. So just keep layering your cheese and your pasta. Uh, then what you're going to do is you're also going to take two cups of milk and one egg that have been combined and pour them over the mac and cheese, which I'll do here in just a minute as soon as I'm finished layering. Uh, finally, uh, you're going to dot, dot the top uh, with a fourth a cup of margarine. Now in her recipe, it's called oleo, uh, which was a term I wasn't really familiar with. Um, oleo is actually an old school term for margarine, and originally it was made from beef fat, today mostly vegetable oil, oils, uh, but it was white, not yellow like butter. There's actually this huge debate as the butter companies did not want them to be able to dye the margarine uh, yellow so it wouldn't be confused with the butter or with the dairy version. Uh, three states actually required that margarine be dyed pink, but that was later overturned by the Supreme Court. Uh, so who knew uh, that back in the late 1800s, there was a butter battle uh, between butter companies and margarine. Now you can totally substitute oleo, aka margarine, with butter, which is what I'm doing today. Now Bess actually says you can make it up to this point and refrigerate it a day in advance. Um, the recipe actually ends there, so there's no baking setting times or temperatures, but it's suggested to bake it slowly, such as on 325 for about 45 minutes, just to make sure that the cheese doesn't burn. So we'll put this in the oven and check back on it a little later. And here you have best Truman's macaroni and cheese. Um, so next up, uh, we're gonna be talking about um, Martha Jefferson, who of course uh, was the wife of Thomas Jefferson. Um, however, she never served as first lady of the United States, uh, but she was first lady of Virginia uh, during Thomas's term as governor from 1779 to 1781. Um, so she unfortunately had passed away in 1782, 19 years before he would become president. Now Thomas Jefferson um, actually served macaroni and cheese at the White House in 1802, but it's very different than what we think of the dish today. And one dinner guest was not too fond of the recipe, uh, describing his tasting of onions, even though there were none in it. Um, he was told that it was flour, butter, and a strong liquor mixed together. Uh, Despite some rumors, uh, Thomas Jefferson did not invent the recipe for macaroni and cheese, uh, but by serving at the White House frequently, uh, he made the dish much more popular here in the United States. Um, the macaroni recipe, uh, which is in his own handwriting, still exists today. Now, I did not attempt to make the pasta, but the recipe in his words go like this. Um, it calls for six eggs, yolks, and whites, two wine glasses of milk, uh, which if you go by a 12 ounce wine glass would be about three cups, two pounds of flour, a little salt. Then work them together without water and very well. Roll it uh, with a roller to paper thickness and cut it into small pieces, which roll again with the hand into long slips and then cut them to the proper length. Uh, put them into warm water uh, for a quarter of an hour, drain them, dress them as macaroni. But if they are intended for soups, they are not to be 
they are not to be put in the soup and not into warm water. Uh, where that recipe ends, the chefs for Jefferson went on to state how they used Parmesan cheese imported from Italy, and after cooking the macaroni, they would coat it with butter and cheese, place it in a baking dish, top with more butter and cheese, and cook it until it was slightly browned and crispy on top. Um, it is important to note uh, that uh, when Jefferson used the word macaroni, uh, he was referring to any type of pasta. Uh, he actually also had a macaroni machine, uh, which was shipped to him um, after he left Paris. Um, it was on a packing list uh, when they moved to Monticello. Um, even though he owned the machine, he often ordered pasta uh, from uh, Italy especially, and his favorite uh, was a small town uh, near Naples. Uh, that made it with a specific type of flour. Uh, so it seems that Thomas Jefferson and probably Martha Jefferson were big fans of uh, pastas. Um, so we're just gonna toss this together. I already had my flour in here uh, with just some butter and Parmesan cheese. Not gonna add any strong liquor to it, um, which seemed like that wasn't such a great idea anyway. And then we're just gonna put it in our baking dish and we will bake it on about 350 until it gets a little browned on top, just like the Jefferson chefs uh, said that they would make it. There we go. And of course, we once again want to top the top with some butter so that it will brown. And so again, uh, Thomas Jefferson and Martha are probably big pasta fans. Um, and here uh, is Thomas Jefferson's uh, mac and cheese. Um, so for the last recipe, uh, I'm going to be telling you how to make Jacqueline Kennedy's casserole Marie Blanche. Uh, now, of course, Jackie Kennedy is one of the most recognized first ladies, and people know her uh, and a lot about her, um, such as her love for French food. Um, but how did JFK like to eat? Uh, well, he really had very little interest in food, it turns out, and his tastes, as Jackie said, quote, uh, his tastes are distressingly normal, plain food, children's food, good food. He likes anything. Um, however, he did have an opinion on the menus because some people at that time, of course, thought there was a little too much French influence at the White House. Um, so he kind of requested there be less French uh, terminology on the menus. Um, so they were only used when they absolutely had to be. Um, now this casserole recipe was served by Jackie at the White House, um, especially during a dinner in 1961 in honor of her sister, Princess Lee Radziwill. Uh, Jackie, of course, had great taste all around, so I'm sure she liked this casserole. Uh, it will also be pretty good. Um, it's also very simple to make. So basically you're going to take one pound of egg noodles uh, that are cooked according to the package and then drained. Uh, then stir together uh, the noodles, one cup of cottage cheese, one cup of sour cream, half a teaspoon of salt, an eighth a teaspoon of black pepper, um, and a half a cup of chopped chives. Uh, finally, grease up a baking dish with butter and uh, bake uh, this on 350 for about 30 minutes or until the noodles begin to brown and the mixture is bubbly. Um, so here you have Jackie O's Casserole Marie Blanche. So you can eat this and feel just like Jackie O and her royalty sister. Um, so thank y'all so much uh, for joining me today, and I hope that you enjoyed our pasta dishes. Um, so I hope you'll try some of these historic dishes um, and tell us which ones you've liked or which ones you would love to try. Um, so also for more um, information about the First Ladies, um, you can follow my Instagram page at Cooking with the First Ladies. And of course, uh, subscribe to the National First Ladies Library YouTube and social media channels uh, for more. So thanks y'all so much and we'll see you next time.